hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review of ready to love season five episode two blind dates if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please like the video child do i gotta get on bended knee honey i'm down on bended knee shout out to boys to men like come on y'all like the video like the video comment and subscribe if you get anything out of the content now child let's get into it if we don't get into it when the episode first opens up first of all the episode didn't give much okay it was really yeah it kind of fell flat just a little bit for me okay it was just S-E-X, S-E-X, S-E-X. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Shout out to salt and pepper. That's all we were talking about. But honey, I'm gonna put some zhuzh on it either way it go. Here we go. When the episode first opens up, the singles meet up for the obligatory ready to love, love brunch. And the food is looking good. Uh, maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> I was like, baby, the food looking good, honey. P.O. is over there talking about he hungry for love. Okay, sir, pipe down so tiffany goes to sit and she's like sitting right next to clifton and joy right so clifton speaks to her and she's like well you were engaged in a conversation he was like oh okay well you know whenever i see anyone coming into my space i just speak so she look around like oh okay i'm like girl it's actually nice that he's speaking to you sitting here all by your lonesome it's called being polite i know it's new so she gets on up and she goes over there to where Wiley is, right? She said Wiley is on her radar and baby Dakia shows up and that pissed her off. So she's like, yeah, I was sitting here and then here comes Dakia. I mean, it's not okay. Tiffany, this is a brunch, a mingling brunch. You don't own Wiley. She's more than welcome to come over and have a seat. Demetrius and his big eyes, they sitting right there as well. So I mean, girl, please. They're talking, right? And so Dakia goes, um, I was looking at you and I was wondering, are you Chuck Brown's son? He said, do I look like him? No, you absolutely don't. I'm trying to figure out how she knew this, but I already know because she went home and got on the Googler, okay? Or she may have just ran across some pictures and realized that you were him and put two and two together and she ain't fooling me. So he goes, yeah, do I look like him? So he goes, Demetrius, is that like a, a famous person? <laughs> So they were like, yeah, it's a very well-known person in D.C. It's D.C. royalty. So he said, you know, my dad is the creator of go-go music, but I don't like to leave with that because I want people to like me for me. So baby, then Tommy walks in. How my beautiful singles doing? Tommy just come on in and talk to him and whatnot, child. So he congratulates them for making it through the first round of eliminations. So he also tells them that this week is about quantity and quality the two cues he said there will be one new man and one new woman that will be entering the space but my thing is this why eliminate two people just to bring in two new people let me tell y'all something i would be offended as hell if i were the person eliminated like why are you gonna eliminate me and then bring in two other people that could potentially be eliminated what's wrong with me i really do not think that they should eliminate people until like the third or fourth week once they start getting the drama and seeing who ain't picking up the calls and who ain't texting back and who ain't going on dates then eliminate them so he said that two of them are going to be going on a blind date so the two people that he chose for the blind dates are ace and laverne he said he chose laverne because he likes to run his mouth he sure does he was over there conducting full-on interviews last episode so then tommy leaves the room right so the food and the drinks are flowing and the singles are mixing and mingling so dakia goes over there and she's talking to demetrius so she's like, yeah, you know, I feel like you're a very confident man. You're a great man. I mean, you just got that big D energy. She acts really thirsty to me. Really, really thir like calm down, ma'am. You're at a brunch. Put down those mimosas if it's not quenching that thirst and pick you up a glass of water. Because, honey, telling this man that he has BDE and you don't even know about him, it's ridiculous. She's like, you know, and for those of you that don't know what BDE is, it's big D you fill in the blank energy ma'am this demographic we know what bde is <laughs> like we know what bde is you're giving thirsty energy okay 
he might be giving BDE, but you're giving thirsty. Okay, you really just gonna have to reel it back just a little bit, honey. Just like allow him to pour into you. Allow him to chase you a little bit. So here he goes sitting back taking all the compliments as she dishes them out. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm sure of myself. I'm sure you are. So then Dakia makes her way on over to Wiley. So she starts talking to Wiley, right? And she's like, yeah, um, he's a bit younger, but maybe I could be a Puma. Okay. I'm sure you can after you found out he was Chuck Brown's son. That I'm not exactly sure what that will mean for you, but um, it's a coinky dink that now you can be a puma. Girl. So she's like, yeah, um, you know, he really surprised me a little bit. He has more to him than I thought. So Wiley over there talking, honey, and grabbing her hand and schmizing. Shout out to Tyra. Baby, this cast here is something else. <laughs> Maybe they are something else. She just needs to let Wiley be. Like, he ages her when I see them together. Like, it gives me aunt and nephew. I don't know what it is, but I just didn't like the aesthetics with the two of them. It, it was giving me something, and I don't like it. So they sit there and continue to talk, child, and continue to throw out the sexual innuendos like they like to do. Moving forward. So the brunch is over, right? And everybody's leaving. And did y'all notice that Wiley and Dakia left hand in hand? Baby, let me find out. So the brunch is over, right? And Precious is over there shooting her shot at Demetrius. Meanwhile, he just laying in the cut. She's like, yeah, so I really want to get to know you, like maybe take you out. He was like, yeah, I mean, uh, that's cool. I don't see it. I do not see it for Demetrius. I don't know about him. Like he seems like he wants the women to work and he just sits back and does nothing. And y'all already know how I feel about the whole military thing of it all. So honey, that was already run strike. And then I see you just taking all the compliments, but you're not really working for the women the same way they're working for you so that's the second strike i mean one more strike and you're out moving forward so clifton goes over and he corners joy and he tells her you know that he missed her today because he didn't really get to talk to her like that because she'd been mixing and mingling with everybody else and so she was like oh, okay so the brunch is over he's like no you need to sit down okay we need our five minutes like i really need to continue to get into it with you because i haven't seen you child joy was ready to go girl you better sit down i didn't get to know this man let me tell you something when a man wants to give you his undivided attention, you better take it. Do you hear me? Baby, he is interested in that joy. But Clifton seems a little bit friendly, okay? I'm watching you because I was noticing throughout the episode, you were giving a little bit of the friendly vibe. I don't want my man to be too friendly. But at the same time, he did always say, you know, I like joy the most. Joy is my number one. And even when he was sitting down talking to the other like child, let me not get ahead of myself. Let me continue. So anywho, they sitting down, they talking. So then she was like, I think they're about to wrap up. Like, we need to get up. So then they stand up and he give her a hug. And baby, let me tell y'all something. That hug, I am a sucker for a good hug. A hug can tell you a lot. And the way he was almost about to pick her up off her feet. Oh, yes, ma'am, honey. I like that he pays special attention to Joy. I like Joy and Clifton together. So far, I'm team Joy and Clifton. But honey, this gonna all change because y'all know how they like to do. Moving forward. Over on the other side, Laverne goes for the blind date and Carmen, who is 43, she does brand management for athletes. She shows up and he said, you know, my first impression was, dang, she thicker than a snicker. From a physical standpoint, he felt like Tommy had it spot on, right? So they start talking. So he's telling her she cornbread fed and whatnot. She said, you know, I work out a lot, like five days a week. He's like, oh, I work out six days a week. She said, are we in a competition? Honey, that's what I was trying to figure out. I'm like, why are you telling her you work out six days a week? She didn't ask you that. So then he tells her that he used to be a bodybuilder. And he's like, yeah, see me, I can't wear no skinny jeans. She was like, stand up, let me look at you. So honey, she touching all over him and whatnot, touching on his gluteus maximus. Girl, I hope you brought your hand sanitizer. And so they touching on each other and whatnot in the middle of this panorama. So after they do that and they're talking, he's like, so where are you from? So she tells him and she's like, yeah, I'm prior Air Force. He was like, me too, 3C. So they got something in common. They got something in common. Shout out to Bobby and Whitney. So they got something in common and whatnot. So she asked him if he had kids. He said he had two daughters. He's been divorced for like 10 years and she has one son. So then he asked her if she's the type to check him because he's going to need somebody strong. You can tell that that's a given. You can tell that she gives off alpha female energy. I just saw it coming through the screen. Actually, the two of them compliment each other. They both flirty. They've both been in the Air Force. They've both been divorced. They both have children. I think they might be all right, honey, but I don't want to put them together just yet. But I mean, I think they may be okay. He said, okay, so how would you get me back in line? She said, I would lean over. I would whisper in your ear. 
He said, oh, okay, well, the way I'm feeling with Carmen, I mean, she going to be up there. Laverne. Laverne is a little eager beaver, ain't he? It's one conversation, sir. One. He's like, I'm amazed by her. Child, he going to speak his speech of compliments over a woman if he don't do nothing else. In the next scene, Ace goes to meet her blind date. Lord, we got another Cornelius. Oh, child, let us pray. So he says he's a real estate developer and he made a million dollars. But for some, you would think a million dollars is a lot, but it's really not. Well, let me tell you something. It's a lot to someone. OK, so it may not be a lot to you, but a million dollars can change someone else's life. So I'm just saying, honey, I mean, I know what you're trying to say, but I'm just saying. So he said, you know, he was close to marriage and it was all his fault that things didn't work out. But I am glad that he could at least recognize that. I was like, OK, he recognizes it. That's a good sign. He said he's in therapy, but he does want kids and they call him cornbread. and He wants a few corn muffins. Okay, Jiffy, well, let's get into it. You do seem cornbread fed, okay? I am loving the natural bodies that they are allowing on this season with the men. I would just appreciate if we could get some women on the season that can be loved on for their natural bodies and not sent home because they're the home girl. Because quiet as it's kept, Cornelius is giving me homeboy as well, okay? Ace seemed very impressed with Cornelius and his nautica shirt, but y'all, they immediately started flirting and whatnot. Cornelius was dressed to run errands. Do y'all hear me? Uh, honey, his outfit was given very much 2001. Like maybe he didn't know the call time. <laughs> maybe he was out like, getting something. And he was like, they were like, you gotta go have a blind date. And he was like, oh, okay, let me go. I'm not gonna go to the Walmart. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the date. Cause baby, those ill-fitting clothes were a hell no for me. I do not like a man that cannot put his clothes on him right. I'm sorry, baby. That's that to me right there. That's an automatic turnoff. If you can't put your clothes on you, big, tall, small, whatever you are, I'm not going to be able to do that. But that's just me. Moving forward. So she asked what type of connection he was looking for. And he said a long-term one. And um, he's dated around, but he really hasn't found anyone. And she said, you know, I needed to do some work on myself first. And I've been doing that. And he said that he's a huge advocate of therapy and mental health, especially in the black community, because we need it. And let me tell you something. I love that. I like that he realizes the necessity of mental health. Because, you know, our people, especially, we are afraid to admit we aren't the healthiest mentally. OK, we will take a thousand Instagram pictures dressed in the finest of designer clothes, go home to the projects with the lights off, cry and be mentally drained and depressed. And we do not talk about that enough. So I am happy that we are finally being open. And I'm starting to see that that's a, a theme for this season. You know, Demetrius sat down with Sabrina. They both talked about counseling and getting therapy. And then here Cornelius is. He's talking about it. Ace says she's done some work. So I like it, honey. I love to see it. She said, well, you know, meditation and yoga has really changed my life. It helped me a lot. Ace's personality is what I envisioned Shiloh to be last season. You know, Shiloh was really calm and she really didn't say much. And then all of a sudden, boom, it was a whole altercation that we were not privy to seeing. And then her and Phil got into it as they got into it. But I was envisioning her personality being Ace, if that makes sense. That's just a side note. So she asked what makes him happy, which I thought was a really a great question. And he says, six, new money and being relaxed. She's like, oh, okay, so you're affectionate. He said, you know, I do a little PDA. And then in his confessional, he said, I can't relate to people that don't put sex as their top priority. Well, honey, you wouldn't be able to relate to me because sex is definitely not my top priority. It's on the list. It's just not at the top. He was like, you know, the sex has to be bomb. Can't accept mediocre sex. I mean, know your worth, king. Okay, sir. Okay. Oh, child. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I am worth. I know I'm worth more than this ill-fitted nautica shirt and these wranglers. Honey, I know that. He threw me off with the sex talk because if the person is crappy, sex is going to be crappy as well. Like, because it starts in the mind. It starts in the mind first. Well, at least for me. Like, if you can touch me mentally and we can really vibe, then, you know, stuff starts flowing. But, honey, if I can't get into that, then I don't care how bomb it is. You're not going to break my back in and then we can't talk about nothing. Like, absolutely not. It's more than just the physical. But that's just my opinion. So he asked for her number. And, of course, she obliged him. And he was like, let me watch you walk away. It gave me waiting to excel. I hope he's not watching me walk away. <laughs> he's watching. Shout out to Loretta Devine. So she walks away and whatnot. Okay, okay Ace, with that thing thinging in the back, honey, that dress was almost coming up. I said, look at Ace, giving him some. In the next scene, Joy and Uh-Oh, I mean, <laughs> P.O. Child. 
P.O. A.K.A. Paul. They go to dinner. <laughs> I can't stand Paul. Paul get on my nerves, honey. It's just something about him that I do not like. He's like, I got your favorite. She's like, what is it? And he actually got it right. Vodka and soda and tequila and liquor. It was something, child, but he got it right. I couldn't do any kind of date with Paul. I just wouldn't be able to do that. But one point for him knowing her drink of choice. Over on the other side, Dakia and Clifton, they go for their date. Got a little sexy charcuterie board. They sitting there looking at each other's eyes. She said he's been on her mind. Well, honey, haven't they all? According to you, everybody in there is on your mind. So Clifton said he asked her on a date because there was some chemistry. Although he likes joy, he wants to get to know other women as well. And they learned from that last season, okay? So back at the date with Paul and Joy, he's asking her about what settling down looks like for her since she's always on the road because she's a singer. She was like, well, you know, it would be different definitely if I had to be in one place. Like the term almost makes me cringe. Well, why are you getting serious with anybody? Like eventually you're going to have to put roots down. I don't think you be, I don't think you're ready to love, Joy, honey. That's not making no sense. So over with Dakia and Clifton, he asked her about premarital sex. He was like, how do you feel about premarital SEX? She said, yes, please. I don't know what it is about Dakia, but I want her to leave some mystery. Like make them work for it. Like she all over everybody. She's everywhere all at the same time. I don't like that. This is a horny group of people do y'all hear me so she's like well you know they say women reach their peak at this age so you know i'm at my peak the conversational skills of some of these people is giving college freshmen this is how college guys used to speak to me when we were freshmen because they wanted to get back to that dorm honey so we can get into it as we got into it not know we 40 years old sitting here talking about you know they say that right now we at our peak so i mean <laughs> what you trying to do like no does he have a 401k? Like, does he take care of his kids? Does he have any children? What is his favorite color? What do you know about him? Where is people from? Like, child, I really hope the next episode, we can delve a little bit deeper. Just a little bit. So she's like, you know, my sex drive was high at first and now it's even higher. And baby, y'all should have seen. Well, I know y'all did see. Did y'all see the way Clifton was looking at her? Child, like he wanted to take a bite out of crime. Okay. Moving forward. Clifton seemed like he might be just there for the sexuals as well. Clifton, I'm watching you. So Paul and Joy, they still on their date on the other side. And she's like, he's a good guy, but my connection is stronger elsewhere. Okay, understood. Meanwhile, Miss Puma and Clifton, they still on their date. He said he loved their conversation, but Joy is still his number one lady. What conversation? Oh, about the SEX? Oh, okay. He said he could have lots of fun with her. I'm sure you could. In the next scene, they have a double date. Cornelius and, child, every time I say Cornelius, it just takes me back to last season. Oh, child. So Cornelius and P.O., they're there, and Sabrina and Tiffany, they show up, and then Precious shows up in another one of those dresses. Girl, you got that dress in every version? You had that same dress on in the long form last week. Girl, I'm watching you. So she's like, you know, I want all the smoke. You know, Precious, she got to make an entrance, child. So they start playing ping pong. It's those three against those two. These ladies don't own no cute jeans. I love me a good pair of high-waisted cute jeans that hug every curve and a cute top. Baby, did y'all not know where you were going for the date? I just don't want y'all to have to stand up on your feet in these heels. Like, I want you to be relaxed and cute. You can give them cute casual. So Paul playing all aggressively. I'm like, Paul, please calm down, sir. So then they separate. So Paul is over there getting to know Precious. And um, she said, you know, I've been wanting to get to know you for a long time. Really? Like, it's been one episode. <laughs> Y'all just met. Like, is it something that they're not showing us? So as he's talking, she's like, so how do you think I like it? He said, a little bit rough. She said, oh, don't threaten me with a good time. Uh, okay, ill. Okay, that's all I have to say about that is ill. So over on the other side, Tiffany and Sabrina, they over there skidding and grinning with Cornelius. So Sabrina was like, so how old are you? So he told her he was 41. They started asking about children, this, that, and the third. And then it was just him and Tiffany because Sabrina scurried on away. So she asked, what was his goal? Like, what was his end goal? Like, did he want a wife? Which is a reasonable question. Okay. And he said, you know, they're interchangeable at this point. Like some people don't even believe in marriage. She said, so what do you want? He said, you know, I can do either one. No, sir. You still got work to do because you are tiptoeing all over that question. Do you want to be married or no? It is a yes or a no question. It is what you want. Do you want to be married or you don't? 
She said, well, I want a husband. And she put the paddle board down, right? He said, well, she put the paddle down and she was just giving off negative energy. How? Like she's letting her intentions be known up front. I want to be married. Him and his dad jeans may not be ready to love either, honey. He got work to do. He got work, baby. He still got work to do as well. Moving forward. Over at the table, P over there asking Tiffany some questions. Because, honey, now she over there with Precious and Paul. So he's like, um, yeah, so do you like spoken word? She's like, uh, not really, but I'm open to it. He said, so if you were doing spoken word, what would your spoken word be called? Uh, it will be called uninterested. That's exactly what it would be called. Like, sir, what are you talking about? What are you asking right now? So then he was like, you know, if you went to the grocery store and they're bagging your items, do you speak to them? Now, I can understand that question because I do want to see how you treat servers, people in service industries. Like, are you rude? What kind of person are you? How do you treat others? I understood that question. But that first question about the spoken word, I'm like, boy, goodbye. So she just looking at him crazy. Paul said, you know, I just really couldn't get anything but surface from Tiffany. Your line of questioning was dumb. It was giving dumb, da dum dum dum. It was giving dumb. <laughs> and I just personally think that Tiffany does not like Paul. If someone else were asking her those questions, I think she would be more inclined to answer. But because it was Paul, she was like, your name is Paul and that's between y'all. Moving forward. In the next scene, some of the ladies come for a date and they're introduced to Carmen and Clifton is introduced to her as well. He said, you know, she had the body and she had the boom and the bang. But then I got closer and she had contacts in and I felt like I was looking at baby Jesus. <laughs> it is crazy. Baby, those contacts are giving hair store. Y'all remember when you could buy colored contacts from the beauty supply? Baby, they were giving very much beauty supply, honey. Oh, child. And honey, they used to keep him behind the counter. Oh, child, that's a whole fool. It's taking me back to 1999. So Tori comes up and here go Carmen. She's like, yeah, he's handsome, but I'm not into the dreads. <laughs> no judgment, but <laughs> judgment. Girls say what now? I'm sure he's not into those 1993 blue contact lenses either. Like I was about to say, we all have our preferences until you judged him. But you're wearing colored contacts in 2022. Girl, goodbye. So they start playing virtual golf and Clifton can't get his swing right. So Carmen gets up there to try to help him, right? She's like, can you hold my hair? He said, oh, okay. So she said, yeah, I just want him to hold my hair because it's real, okay? And ain't too many on here with real hair. Pipe down, old blue eyes. First of all, you would be surprised what is under people's wigs. Truth be told, under those wigs and weaves, a lot of women have beautiful long hair, but wearing your natural hair is a lot of maintenance okay and not to mention if you live in a place like texas where the humidity is on 5,000, when you stand in the front of the mirror you looking like something as soon as you walk outside you looking like a powerpuff girl it's a whole fool so baby keep your judgment to yourself honey I'm trying to talk about other people's hair girl goodbye moving forward baby tori was feeling joy in that jumpsuit honey he was like look at that i know that's right honey she was giving in that jumpsuit clifton is talking with ace and carmen but honey he paying attention to joy because he wasn't fooling me they were asking him questions and if y'all go back and watch he had all eyes on joy i know that's right honey. that's how it's supposed to be so he's talking to ace and carmen san diego and told them that he was divorced two years ago and hasn't had anything since and now he's looking for love so here go carmen let me see your muscle he said which one okay that was a turnoff for me clifton that was a turnoff okay Ooh, they're a bunch of sex fiends honey so why they doing all that Ace gets up and travels to the bar after that little exchange. So Tori and Joy, they're over there playing foosball. And he's like, so how important is sex to you? And this cast, that is all they talk about is sex. Like get to know each other first before you ask their favorite sexual position. She was like, it's extremely important. Very. He said, good. You trying to get your kidneys touched or what? Let me tell you something. As soon as he would have said that, I would have excused myself. I, it would have been no more playing, no more conversation. And Joy is a whole 41-year-old woman. Girl, why even entertain that? Sir, please don't touch any of my vital organs, please. With your peen, honey, I would like it not to happen. Thank you so much. Ugh. It's clear he's very sexually attracted to Joy. But what tripped me out is last episode, him and Precious were having a whole therapy session. And he knew why the caged bird sung. But this episode, he see Joy in that bodysuit and he want to touch her kidneys with his member absolutely not 
So Joy was like, you know, I would be open to a date with Tori, but it won't give me the meat and potatoes. Oh, he's trying to get you the meat, all right. Moving forward. Over on the other side, Clifton notices Ace by herself, so he goes to check on her. And I thought that that was very sweet. It's like he does something, but then he has a redeeming quality right after that. I thought that was very sweet for him to realize that she was over there by herself. She's like, you know, I just didn't want to impose. You know, sometimes I just want to be, you know, me. And people think things are wrong because I'm not in the mix. But, you know, I'm here and I'm happy that they're dating. I'm here for the support. I bet y'all Ace smell like incense. Don't she look like she got incense in her apartment? Giving straight Erica Badu, honey. Giving Baduism. Ace, honey, I know you want to let everybody, you know, connect and whatnot, but you're on a dating show. So you got to get in there, honey, or else they're going to send you home thinking you're not interested. In the next scene, all of the men go to meet up at the gentleman's lounge, right? And Cornelius walks in. Here go, Laverne. Who is you? Sir, you've only been on here one episode. Relax. This is your first time even being introduced to the gentleman's lounge. Laverne getting on my nerves. Sir, in the confessional, he was like, oh, okay, Cornelius, you seem like a pretty cool dude or whatever. Got a good vibe to him, but uh, he's no competition for me. Why does he have to be competition for you? Laverne, be quiet. Just, just, just be, just be handsome and be silent. Ugh, he gets on my nerves already, child. So Tommy asked Cornelius about the date with Ace and he said he liked her and the date was successful. So then he asked Laverne about his date with Carmen and he's like, I listened like you said, okay? I was quiet and I listened and you know, she was a vibe. She even touched me, you know, touched my gluteus maximus. This might be it. Tommy says, slow down. We still early in the process. <laughs> Yes, Tommy, you got to tell him, honey, because he saw what happened last season and he don't want y'all getting caught up, honey, because Cornelius cannot get out of his contract, honey. He in a death row contract. Suge Knight got a hold of the last season's Cornelius and y'all don't want that smoke. Moving forward. So after that, he asked who the men were feeling. Tori says Sabrina and Joy. Clifton said he had a great day with Dakia. And, you know, of course, he's attracted to Joy as well. Paul said Dakia had the boss lady demeanor. But he could tell after 9 p.m. she liked to be thugged out. What does that even mean, sir? Like, I know what it means, like, but why are you saying it out loud? She likes to be thugged out? Boy, anywho, Wiley said, you know, I got energy from Dakia. Then Tiffany came up and, I mean, she just knocked me over. So Tommy said, okay, so we know who y'all do like. So tell me who you weren't feeling. So Laverne said, Sabrina, he said, you know, she said she was going to call him back and she didn't. She probably got busy. We're adults. And if she has children, that's even more of a reason why she didn't call you back. Like people have lives. He might be a little clingy and a little needy. So Paul said Tiffany would be the very, very, very last person on his list. He was like, you know, I asked her some very good questions. So if she couldn't answer them, then she's either not genuine or she's hiding something. I see why Paul is single. And sir, your questions were not good. Okay. I understood one of them only because I had to use critical thinking, but the questions were not really good questions and she's not hiding anything, but she does need to learn how to engage in a conversation because that's how you get to know people. But quiet as this kept, she just don't like you. Now let's continue on. So Clifton said, you know, Tiffany Cornelius 2.0 said Tiffany because she slammed her paddle down and she was like, I'm looking for a husband. So Demetrius was like, oh, she slammed her paddle down like that word. No, she did not. She asked you, what you were looking for you told her and she said that she was looking for a husband and again what is wrong with wanting to be married y'all are of a particular age are you on this show for a long lasting relationship or just on this show to date until you get off we know the answer but my god so tori said carmen demetrius said dakia because he's not sure she can take the boss hat off so you are intimidated by a boss is what i'm hearing because if anything, I saw her fawning all over you. So I was a little bit confused by his answer. Wiley said Ace because he couldn't get, get past the yoga. That's all she wants to talk about is the yoga and the meditation of it all. He's like, but I'm just trying to figure out like what else is there? So Paul said, all I got was good energy from her. And that's all I got. Wouldn't you want good energy? Okay. Ace does seem sleepy a lot though. <laughs> she a sweet lady. But she don't seem like her head is in the game, child. So baby Laverne piped up, honey, because what they say that for? He's like, well, you know, I see things differently. I mean, she's all that. She's very layered. She's love. She's peace. Like she's the epitome of a phenomenal woman. She's Oprah. She's Michelle Obama. She's Beyonce. She's Jill Scott. I'm like, not Jill Scott. 
Wallace said, well, I ain't see all that. <laughs> and Wallace said, I ain't getting none of that. So then Tommy said, hold on, hold, hold, hold on now, okay? You said she's Oprah and Michelle Obama. Okay, okay, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute, honey, because Tommy trying to figure out what exactly is happening. He said, you and Paul do a lot. I know that's right, honey. Basically, y'all do too much. Y'all do too much. And now that you're in a category with Paul, honey... You might as well get sent home next. Child, what is happening? I do appreciate him writing for her, but she is not all of those women wrapped into one on the second episode. Let's get to know her first. So then Tommy says this quote. He says, well, y'all know what it is. The path to finding one requires you to remove many. Tommy, where you get that slogan from? Where you get that saying from? You gotta watch Tommy, honey, making up Tommyisms and whatnot. In the next scene, Tiffany goes for the eliminate. Child, she done went for this date with Paul. But she did go in there and she said that I'm going to try to, you know, reset as far as Paul is concerned. But my whole thing was not her and Paul reconnecting or whatever they were trying to do. Girl, what are you wearing? Oh, child. Ooh, that outfit was a fool. Do y'all hear me? Over on the other side, Wiley goes to meet with ace Beyonce Oprah Michelle Obama and sits down and has a talk with her. Back on the other side, Paul and Tiffany are still over there and he's asking her, what's one thing that... I would be surprised to know about you. She's like, why? Like, why are you asking me questions? Like, I didn't come here to be interviewed. Paul, just let it go. Don't ask her nothing else, okay? Back over here with Wiley and Ace, she, he's telling Ace that he wants children. Now, I hear a lot of them saying they want to start a family, but I'm not hearing a lot of them say they want marriage. Moving forward. Over on the other side, Paul is asking Tiffany another round of questions. She's like, you want to play 21 questions? I like 21 questions and they all about us. Shout out to 50 Cent, baby. Paul is asking 21 questions. <laughs> Tiffany hates answering Paul's questions. She cannot stand Paul. So over in the next, in the next scene, Wiley gets up for whatever reason. So he tells her that the guys got together and they want to see more sides of her they were trying to figure out if they want to do that or if they want to let her go. Paul is like, well, you know, a few of the men have decided that you are not ready to love. Here go, Tiffany. Who not ready to love? You denim tennis skirt? You, you're not ready to love. She's like, am I being sent home right now? He's like, give me a hug. <laughs> Paul, she don't like you. Please stop trying to touch this woman. She's like, no, I don't want to. She said, you know what? I'm not upset. Do I look bothered? Yes, for 100, Alex. I will take yes. You know why? She said no. You know why? Because I'm not. It's given, it's given Tiffany Pollard. It's given when Tiffany got eliminated from Flavor of Love. Remember when she was like, you think I give about Flav? Do you think I'm upset? Because I'm not. Yes, you are, Tiffany. <laughs> You definitely are, honey, and you're going to cry in that car. So she gets upset, honey, and she leaves to go catch her Uber. I think that it was for the best because I could see a little attitude starting to emerge. So I think they made the right choice. She's like, you know what? I just think that he's jealous that I didn't have a connection with him. That doesn't make any sense because he's not the only one that voted, okay? Although his vote mattered, it was not the deciding factor. Girl gone. So then we see Ace, and Ace said, you know, I can't be described in words. I need to be experienced. I know that's right, girl. Well, honey, go on and get to being experienced before you hear the words, you're not ready to love. And that was the end of the episode. Child, y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what y'all thought about this little filler episode. It gave like a pinch of zhuzh, and, but it was mostly S-E-X all over the place. Don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.